So let's get into the Q&A session. Our audience has submitted many questions through Slido. So let's turn to the Q&A session to obtain the answers from our speakers. Okay, let me get to the questions sections. So this question for Professor Ekanayaka, are existing solar power technologies cost effective in the long run? Of course, uh, you, like uh, uh, the, the, the cost of uh, solar and wind has now come down so much, uh, they, they can easily compete with the, uh, the conventional technologies. I was listening to uh, uh, Ajit Alvis, who is the, the project officer of uh, uh, Mana Wind Farm. And he talks about uh, including everything, paying the interest and all that. Uh, the price of electricity that will be generated from Vanna Wind Farm will be four US cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, whereas, uh, you know, like four US cents is uh, somewhere around uh, uh, like 200, uh, I don't know exact number, but it's a very small number. So uh, these numbers are coming down, the prices are coming down that as the technology is maturing. So yes, they will be cost effective in the future. Okay, thank you, sir. So uh, the next question is for engineer Garmi Dishanayaka. Sir, can every country be held to the same standards of sustainability when considering the vast differences of wealth and development? Uh, yes. Uh... You know, different countries can can go for different levels depending on you know the resources they have the technologies they have the knowledge they have and so on and so forth it all all depends on uh, um, your your say uh, <clears throat> country's circumstances yeah so you, you, first thing you need to you, know, you need to have people having a good understanding of the need you know that is the starting point including the general public, you know, the necessity, necessity for going in for sustainability, that is important. I think this is what I think the Michelle uh, you know, was trying to address. So that is the starting point. Once that is there, then the rest is much easier. Then also we need to uh, have our the decision makers, you know, the policy makers, they also should understand the, the importance and the need for it. Then, then you can bring in the other part, you know, that the technocrats, you know, the, the professionals, you know, they can do the, the other part, that is the technology and, and also the making uh, uh, technology transfer is required, the capacity is building required. And countries like, you know, uh, our country, like Sri Lanka, you know, developing countries, sometimes, you know, we cannot do things on our own. So we need to, we need the support of other countries now. Uh, as you could see now, even for climate change, you know, the mitigation, external support is available. So we need external support in terms of technology, in terms of capacity building, and also uh, mm. uh, capacity, even, even some, you know, system changes, like you know, even some policy changes. So depending on the resources, in the resource pool countries now we have, we have seen uh, uh, the examples of Professor Ekanayake. Now he was quoting the good examples of countries like Japan, Australia, UK, where they have you know the resources. When I say resources, it's not only the money; they have the knowledge, they have the the technology, so they are going for it. So uh, that is why you know we need external assistance uh, to go for it. So to answer your question, depending on the level you are, uh, then you know the. The time, you know, the time taken for you to achieve that level also will be different. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, now uh, uh, one more thing we need to understand: all the developed countries they have taken what is called unsustainable development path, fossil fuel based development path. Advantage we have countries like ours, you know, the developing countries, you know, still we have time for us to go for you know the sustainable development path 
Yeah. So sometimes the you know very uh, uh, I would say small countries, even the resourceless countries, can be even faster achieve the sustainability than other countries. And also some of the developing uh, developed countries, you know, it is hard for them to come down from the level what they are now, you know, especially with regard to the consumption. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So the next question is to Professor Janaka Ekanayaka. Are batteries and solar panels actually sustainable when considering the raw materials required for their mass production? Like uh, there are, as I showed you, there are uh, solar panels made out of organic uh, cells. Uh, the only problem right now is they are very inefficient. But, you know, if you can make that technology, uh, you know, the production technology cheaper, then definitely we will have enough organic waste to uh, convert it to, you know, the solar cells. And, uh, you know, the, some of the stuff uh, Garmini was mentioning, you know, the closing the loop can be made through that even. So uh, there are ways to achieve the sustainability. Uh, right now, I don't think that there is a scarcity of silicon. Uh, there is no, uh, there isn't a scarcity of lithium. Uh, so right now we don't have a big issue, but the technologies are developing. So I'm sure they will be sustainable. Okay, sir. Thank you. Sir. So uh, the next question is to engineer Garmin Sena Nayaka. What can we do as undergraduates for development to be more sustainable? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I think there are a lot of things that you could do. As I said before, uh, understanding the need for it. Yeah, so we will not have a future if you don't understand this. Yeah. As young, you know, the young generation, I think uh, uh, compared to, you know, the our, our time, I think the young generation have a better, they have a better understanding of the need for it. So that is the starting point. Then also, without waiting other people to, you know, do many things, try to do something possible at, uh, you know, uh, by yourself. Yeah. You can do, you know, once you understand, you know, different things like, you know, the and the, some of these things, you know, some, some, you know, the concept I, you know, you don't need to go in for, you know, very high technical, you know, the solutions, even little things could contribute. Yeah. Now, little things could contribute. Now, uh, even, you know, the, now this, this kind of things, you know, I mean, if you really see the resource uh, savings, what we are realizing. Now, if you are to have a session like this, yeah. Uh, in a physical setting, now just imagine the resources, amount of resources we need to spend. Yeah. So we have, you have hundred over hundred people here using, you know, this kind of, you know, the technologies and, you know, I mean, more or less you get the same effect. Likewise, I think you need to look into different uh, aspects, you know, the different possibilities in, in day to day life. Yeah. Maybe your transport, maybe you live, maybe you consume how you dress and all that is, is possible. Yeah. Uh, and try to make a little contribution. So that is, uh, that will go a long way. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. So uh, the next question is to uh, Professor Ekanayagra. Is it possible to locally manufacture solar panels and is it economically feasible? Obviously, we have the technology. We have the know-how. Um, I'm sure we should be able to produce our uh, solar panels. Uh, the only problem is the uh, the raw materials. Now, one of the main issues we are having is the Sri Lankan um, industry likes. I mean, I'm not blaming all the industries, but some industries like quick money. Now, I don't know whether you have seen that the, uh, if you are from you know, the Martel area, you will see the train in some part of the year, the train will be carrying a lot of white stones. 
these stones are going to Japan to extract silicon. But unfortunately, we don't add value to them. The value addition is done in Japan. And then, you know, if you are trying to bring the silicon from there, of course, it's not going to be. So I think the whole process needs to be carefully planned because I don't, I mean, I don't believe that we have a lot of silicon in the country that can produce uh, silicon solar cells uh, forever, but uh, there will be enough resources to start a process. But silicon extraction process is uh, expensive. And uh, you know the the, the uh, what you call it uh, uh, capital required for such. So we need to carefully study whether it is worthwhile extracting silicon in Sri Lanka and producing uh, silicon, uh, you know, the solar panels in Sri Lanka. Having said that, the solar inverters we can definitely do it in our country. Now, I am right now developing a solar inverter, slightly different from the other inverters. And, uh, you know, our anticipation is to uh, produce that uh, together with a local company uh, within this year. Uh, you know, my, my progress has been really hampered by the COVID because my engineers can't come and work in the lab. So that's there. But, you know, like, I think one of the main issue we are having is like when we when we brought the television into the country, I'm sure that you know like seventies we haven't had the the either know how or the ability to start a te television factory in Sri Lanka. But I'm sure we could have done our uh, all our um, uh, antennas in Sri Lanka. But what happened was we gave that also to Nippon and brought all the an antennas, which anybody can do it in backyard of a house. So I think we need to pick the right technology out of these technologies and do it in our country rather than trying to do everything here. I hope that that answers. Vidura, Vidura, yeah. can, I, can I add to Professor? Yeah, please. Yeah, please. Sure. Yeah. I think what we need to understand, as very rightly mentioned by Professor, now we need to understand the you know the global value chain yeah so we we try to be part of this value chain okay and also now uh, you know the economic of scale matters okay now uh, this, this, these are the misconceptions. you know i mean we cannot you know produce something for our market you know of, of course you know of course if you need we can manufacture solar cells but you know can we uh, uh, you know, our, our, our market is very small, so you cannot justify the investment unless we have a bigger market outside. For us to have a bigger market, you know, we need to be competitive in our products. So then comes the technology, the productivity, you know, the, all these things comes into play. So what we should be doing, as he quite rightly mentioned, we should try to focus on what is possible here and make that contribution, of course, the value addition, you know, not just, you know, the uh, exporting grow home, but we need to integrate into the global value chain. Yeah. Now, uh, the example he quoted, now, of course, you know, I mean, you know, we can copy and start doing it, but what he said, you know, we are coming up with a new, new kind of inverter. You know, that is our invention. With that, you know, the, we, can, we can capture a bigger market. So I think that should be the way. So we should not try to make everything here, but we, we should identify where we have the global competitiveness. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Ekana again, Engineer Shenana, for that valuable answer. I think he, he or she get valuable answer. So uh, the problem is this is the last one. So uh, for this question for the Engineer Shenana, sir, what are the technologies available for sustainable transport? Can we move Sri Lanka towards a low carbon transport system? I think you are, you are asking a very, very timely and relevant question. Unfortunately, the entire world is moving in one direction with regard to the e-mobility. Okay. All these countries uh, have, you know, set up their targets to uh, do away with uh, internal combustion engine. 
you know, the Michelle was talking about it, you know, 125 year old technology we are still using. Yeah. Whereas other countries are, are you know, very quickly moving into the e-mobility. Okay, what is required here? Of course, you know, the, the, the sustainable transport, you know, you have many different options, many different options. You need to have, you know, the good public transport, yeah, efficient railway network. And, and also the, of course, we, are to, we can also talk about the non, uh, you know, the motorized transport, but the e-mobility will be the future, will be the future. For that, you need to have a policy support and also long-term, you know, the policy direction and the support. It is possible. And also I think if you go for e-mobility, we can make our vehicles here. You know, it's not that complicated, you know, I mean, because the economic would uh, support this idea, you know, I mean, now the batteries are coming down, the cost of batteries are coming down. Yeah, even we can convert some of these vehicles, you know, I mean, this, this is, now, countries like UK, they have said that, uh, that the Norway is leading in this direction, and the China, they cannot demand, the, they can meet the demand for uh, electrical vehicles. But whereas in our country, there's no consistent policy supporting the immobility, unfortunately. So this is what is required. I'm sure, I'm sure the, the Professor Ekanayaka being the vice chairman of uh, uh, Public Utilities Commission, where I am also uh, a mediator uh, there for quite some time. I think this kind of things need to be brought up to the you know the high level of discussion and you know, take quick action. Thank you. Something to that with I think uh, I mean as the Garmini said, which is one of the uh, very important topic. Uh, but we need to plan things, you know, the poly that is where we need to be very careful. Now, remember, uh, I was showing you how the batteries can support the renewables. Now, the electric vehicle has a battery. And if we just use it for mobility uh, and, you know, the, the car will come home uh, at around six o'clock you will plug in your car and uh, you will, you want to, because tomorrow morning you want car to be ready to be, you know, commute again. Uh, and the, that will become a burden to our electrical network because our electrical network has the peak from six to nine. So uh, uh, that is for, we need to have some smart mechanisms, smart charging is there. The smart charging allows us to either sell electricity within the battery during that peak hour and charge the battery from, you know, uh, like the, now the CEB has introduced this TOD new tariff. Uh, you can start the battery charging from midnight to early morning. We are really using that energy. So I think it is just not uh, the policy that is required to, you know, promote electric, uh, electric vehicles. We also need policy to utilize them properly within our existing infrastructure. Otherwise, uh, you know, as I have seen in, uh, in this uh, your question, somebody is asking uh, whether it's, you know, it's going to be another burden or something. I can't remember the exact wording. So you can make it not to be a burden to the electrical system because, you know, like, what everybody thinks is you burn more fossil fuel to charge these batteries. But if you do it in the, 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 the late night, we are having issues of you know, running some of the plants in the night. So we can nicely plan things, but of course, you know, we need a uh, integrated planning. That is something lacking in the country. Not only electrical sector cannot do it, it has to be the transport sector, electrical sector to get together and plan things properly. Okay, thank you, sir. So uh, due to time constraint, uh, we have to end the Q&A session now. So a huge thank you to our speakers for clarifying the doubts of our participant. Huge thanks. So moving on from the Q&A session, uh, I have to uh, remind the uh, audience about, uh, we will put the feedback form 
uh, please feel free to fill the feedback form of the event which we have shared now. Your feedback helps us improve. So now I would like to present the digital token of appreciation to Professor J.B. Ekanayaka. Your contribution has been valuable. for sharing your valuable time and knowledge this webinar. Actually, uh, many thanks to Professor J.B. Eknag, sir. Please Thank accept it. Thank you very much for Vidura for inviting me and it was a good opportunity to share some of our, you know, the, the findings and uh, ideas. And thanks for the participant for staying with us until uh, the dinner time. Okay. So next, I would like to present the digital token of appreciation to Engineer Gamini Sena Nayaka for sharing your valuable time and knowledge at this webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vidura. It's a pleasure. So now we are going to come into the point that we all have to consider. So I invite all participants and speakers to turn on your camera to take a quick group photo. So uh, let's wait for a couple of minutes to uh, just uh, turn on your camera and be ready. Okay, I think the participant who can turn on the camera has already opened. Uh, let's wait for, let's see. Okay, uh, we are getting the photo now. Uh, three, two, one. Two. Okay, we got the photo. Yes. Yeah. So moving from on that, so Techno Sapiens is a video, video series launched by Technometer Sri Lanka, bringing you details on latest cutting edge technology. Let's go, in, go to the, a quick video about that. Technology, the great rolling engine of change is reaching its zenith. Are you evolving with it? Energy, uses of sustainable energy resources and application of clean technologies to promote a green world. Mobility, development of electric power, autonomous vehicles for convenience and safety. Health, initiating the ability of treating patients remotely ensuring the safety of your loved ones. Work. Involvement of efficient and productive industrial opportunities. Education. Creating a mutual beneficial atmosphere for both teaching and learning media. Entertainment. Invention of powerhouses of entertainment media for a high quality and a high definition Period. IEEE Technometer of Sri Lanka launched the video series Techno Sapiens Technology for Humanity. A series of educational videos on dynamic cutting edge technologies equipped in many industries across the globe. Keep watching, be updated. Stay tuned with us.